So before we start this course here, I just want to mention that this is going to be a beginner-friendly course, at least here in the beginning. It will be a little bit beginner-friendly for people who are new to PHP, since I know from experience back many years ago when I was learning PHP, that PHP can be difficult for some people when they get started learning PHP for the first time. PHP is considered one of the easier languages to learn when it comes to programming languages, but again, it's relative to where you are at the moment. So if you already know a programming language beforehand, then PHP is going to be quite easy for you to learn. But if you don't know any programming languages, it will be a tough climb, at least in the beginning, until you get into the concept of how exactly does PHP actually work. So just to mention that this is going to be beginner friendly here in the beginning, and then we're gonna slowly start climbing up the ladder and make it a little bit more advanced as we go on. Now, I should probably also mention that there's two courses on my channel that teaches PHP. This one right here is the one you should start with if you don't know anything about PHP up until now. So this is going to be what is called procedural PHP. Then the other course is going to be what is called object-oriented PHP. So if you know PHP beforehand and you want to learn object-oriented PHP, then you should probably jump over to the other course, which I will leave a link for in the description if you want to check that one out. So to begin with here, let's actually start talking about what exactly PHP is and what you can use it for inside websites. Because if you haven't learned PHP before, then you might have some questions about it. And that's what I'm going to try and answer in this video here before we start moving on to actually learning PHP. Now I should mention that we will also learn how to install a server on our local machine in this video here. So if you don't know how to do that, you should probably not skip this video, or at least jump to the end of the video where I do actually show how to do that. So that is required in order to get started with PHP. So PHP stands for, or at least is an acronym, for PHP Hypertext Preprocessor. And what PHP is, is a scripting language that runs on the server side rather than on the client side, which you might be used to if you come from a JavaScript background, or if you come from HTML and CSS, all of that gets run on the client side, meaning inside the browser. PHP, however, is run on the server side, meaning that it runs on the server, not on your local computer. PHP is also what is considered a loose language and is also one of the easier languages to learn if you want to learn programming. And I just want to point out the fact that it's called a loose language because when it comes to PHP, it is also one of those languages that you can actually write and run inside your website. And even though it's really bad code, it can still work. And because of this, PHP has gotten sort of a bad rumor when it comes to is PHP good to learn? Because a lot of the more advanced developers out there look down on PHP in a lot of cases because PHP is so easy to jump into as a new developer that developers start to produce PHP code for websites early on when they just start learning PHP and therefore there might be a lot of lag in the formatting of your PHP or there might be a lack of security when it comes to PHP. And that's why it's so important when you jump into learning PHP that you go in with the mindset that you want to learn how to program proper PHP and not just learn a little bit of PHP so you can create like a quick login system or something. You need to actually learn the fundamentals of PHP, otherwise your PHP code will be lacking when it comes to certain etiquettes when it comes to producing proper code. But with all that said, as long as you jump into these lessons here and just have the mindset that you want to learn PHP in the proper way, you should be fine. Now you might still have some questions about what exactly can PHP do when it comes to websites because I'm talking about PHP being on the server side, you know, JavaScript being in the client side, what exactly does all that mean? And what all this means is simply that if you want your website to remember certain information, then you can use databases to store data that users might submit to a website such as a login system, or you can perform server-side operations such as if you want to create a contact form inside a website. So just to name a few examples, there's a lot of different things that are quite powerful that you can do using PHP code that you can't use other languages for, or at least to a certain degree. Do bear in mind that PHP is a scripting language or server-side language that were built for website development. Meaning that you will see that there's a lot of support when it comes to the website functionalities that you're trying to build using PHP code. So now the next question is, what exactly do you need to know in order to get started with this course here? Well, first of all, you need to know HTML. Second of all, there's nothing else you need to know. So if you know HTML, then you're pretty much good to go. You don't need to know JavaScript before you jump into this course. A lot of people recommend that you know JavaScript before this course here because JavaScript and PHP have some similar syntax when it comes to the way you 
program it. A lot of programming languages do share similar syntax. So if you learn one, one programming language, it's going to be easier to learn another programming language. So just in general, it works the other way around as well. If you learn PHP, it will be easier to learn JavaScript. Hey, we do need another thing though, because like I mentioned, PHP is a server-side language. So that means that we can't just create a website like we would with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript and simply run PHP inside that website. We have to have our website running on a server before PHP will actually work. That means that we have to install a local server on our computer, which isn't dangerous. It's not something that is complicated. It literally takes one minute to do. So it's fairly quick to set up. You don't need to be worried about anything. It pretty much works the first try for everyone. So it's not complicated. And just to mention it, because there might still be some confusion about why we need a local server. When you have a website and you develop it just using HTML and CSS, you have it on your computer locally without uploading it to the internet. You don't do that until the website is done, right? So therefore, if you want to develop PHP, it makes sense that we want to be able to develop on our computer before we upload it to the internet, right? So that's why we need to have a local server and that's not something that's connected to the internet. It's just locally on your computer, meaning that you don't need to have internet and you don't need to have an online website in order to develop on this website here. So what we're gonna do to start with here is you're gonna go ahead and head over to apachefriends.org, which is the website where you can download a software called Xamp. Now there's a lot of different software out there when it comes to installing a server. And I do know that some Mac users like to use MAMP in order to set up a local server. But just bear in mind that I've seen quite a few comments on my videos and a lot of people who jump into my course with another server they installed. A lot of them tell me they have issues when it comes to connecting to a local server with that software they're using, which isn't the same as XAMPP. So if you want to make sure that you're following my tutorials exactly to the point and that nothing is going to mess up when it comes to installing a server, I do recommend installing XAMPP, which is the one that I will be using throughout this series here. So once you download and install XAMPP, you do need to remember where you installed XAMPP because afterwards we're gonna to have to head to that install location and go into a folder in order to set up our website or any sort of website you want to create in the future using XAMPP. So once you have it installed, let's go ahead and head to the install location and go inside the XAMPP folder that just got created because you installed it. And inside that folder, you'll see we have many different folders in here. The only one you have to touch is going to be the one called htdocs. At least that's the only one you're gonna to touch for now since we're this early on in development. Inside this htdocs folder, you're gonna see a couple of different files. You're just gonna go ahead and delete those files you see in here because those files are just here to welcome you into XAMPP. So once you load up the software for the first time and you enter your server, or at least inside where you have your website, it's just going to welcome you to XAMPP. So just go and get rid of those. Those files are meant to be deleted after the first time you install XAMPP. So just get rid of them. Oh, and just a quick tip for you, I do recommend you save a shortcut for this folder since you will be using this folder every single time you have to create a new website. So any website we create in the future, whenever you create a root folder for a website, you have to put them inside this folder called htdocs. So after deleting the files, let's actually go ahead and run the program. So if you were to go ahead and run your installation of XAMPP, if you don't have a shortcut after installing XAMPP, just go ahead and go back one directory and go ahead and click on this file that I show on the screen here, since that is going to be the uh, control panel in order to open up XAMPP and start your server. So you can actually start using PHP. Inside the control panel, there's going to be two servers that you need to start every single time you start up XAMPP, because without these two servers, it's not going to be able to run the PHP inside your website. And the two servers you need to start here is the one called MySQL and the one called Apache. Now just a quick tip for you, in the future, to make this a little bit faster, if you go to the config button, you can actually set up that once you open up XAMPP, it's just going to run those two servers immediately so you don't have to start them manually every single time. So just go ahead and activate those two. And then every single time you start up XAMPP, it's just going to run those servers immediately. It's just much quicker. And again, just in case you have questions here about what exactly XAMPP is, it is just a program you open up in order to start the two servers that we need in order to be able to run our website using PHP code. So what you're going to do every single time you have to go inside and see your website is you have to make sure your website root folder is inside the htdocs folder. That's the first step. Then once you want to open up your website, you need to make sure you have XAMPP open 
and those two servers running because that is going to be a requirement to get PHP running. Then once you've done that, the only thing we need to do to open up our website so it supports PHP is to make sure we type in localhost inside our browser. Then it's going to open up your server or at least the HC docs folder on your server. And remember, this is the place where we have all the websites you might have inserted inside the HC docs folder. So from here, you'll be able to select the website you want to open and then it's just going to open up the website. And just to point this out, because I know that people have issues with this, if you want to open up your website inside the browser, don't go inside your root folder, right click on the file and open it inside your browser. Don't do that because it's not going to work. You have to go inside the browser, type in localhost and open the website from there. Otherwise, PHP is not going to work. So with all that said, this is how we install a local server on our computer so we can actually run PHP. And this is also how we open up our website inside the browser when we want to actually see the website. So in the next video, we're going to talk about syntax when it comes to PHP and how we open up our first PHP document when we want to develop using PHP. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.